The Rewind Sports 60. Sport 60. 60. 60. From the city of big shoulders, the jewel of the Midwest, comes a sports show that's one of a kind. One of a kind. From iconic players to iconic stadiums to iconic teams, this is my kind of town. Chicago! Rewind Sports 60 is my kind of show. From Air Jordan to Sweetness to Papa Bear Hallis, this city works hard but plays even harder. Danny Carlino and Jerry Riles bring you the Rewind Sports 60. Live, live, live. Rewind, the Rewind Sports, Sports 60. 60 starts now. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of the Rewind Sports 60. We're broadcasting live from the world's famous Serenello's Restaurante Italiano, right here in the heart of Wheeling. I'm Jerry Riles, and let's get right to this esteemed panel. He's the one. He's the only. He's known as DC, the Italian Stallion. He's Danny Carlino. What's up, DC? Good morning, Jerry. Not only are we broadcasting, we're projecting. about it. Chicago's very own, the best comedian, the best entertainer. He's just simply the best guy in the land. He's Kelly Lee Williams! <laughs> I know, hey, what's happening, guys? Sorry I haven't been here for a minute. I've been busy with some contests. Stuff. I've been busy! I've been busy. I had to do some contesting. I'm in the finals of this thing called The One, and uh, it's 10 grand for the prize. So first, Congratulations. I'm, I'm going to get that money, yo. We're going to get that money. We're going to do some sports stuff. We're going to do a lot of sports stuff and things and stuff. Well, I don't, I don't want to cut you short here, but um, we'll say you finish in second. No, I didn't finish. It's, the finals are this. Okay, but so the no, I mean, if you do finish in second. What are you talking about? I, I'm just, if you're not first, you prepare, you're last. you got to go for the best and prepare for the worst. If you're not first, you're last. There is no other thing than well, first. I just want to know what the prize is. Like the, a short bicycle or something? The like, prize like, is, is the second prize is your fire. I don't oh, even care. Okay. I didn't even think about it. This is a rough contest, so make sure you get out Ten there. large. That's what we're going okay. for, what my friend. Down, jump down. You're oh, fired. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> That man hasn't fired anybody in his life. Hey man, something. Uh, something yeah, <laughs> but he's made other people fire. People. I like, I like your lapel pin. You got oh, thank the, you. Uh, you, got, you, got, you got the American flag, but it, it's, it's not in its proper. Well, it's not in its proper place because of a very significant reason. October, uh, August 12th, today, one year ago, that Charlottesville uh, uprising exactly. happened. Unite the right happened, and Heather Heyer died because someone ran, decided to run her over with a car. One year later. The Nazis are on the White House lawn right now. That's why this flag is upside down. Because this country is under distress. This country is under attack. And we need to wake up and see what's going on around us. Having Nazis out here in the White House is not normal. We're not supposed to be seeing this. They're supposed to be underground. They're supposed to be doing their little whatever they do underground. We need to put them back underground. So let's get together and get this done. He's Kelly Lee Williams, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, the one, the only, my good friend. He is a freelancer here in the Chicagoland area, covering sports. Way. He gets the job done. Has a fantastic article this past week. You yes. definitely want to check him out. Gabe Silgato in the house. What's up, Gabe? Morning, everybody, and uh, I totally support uh, what Kelly's doing with the pin there. Definitely agree with them. We definitely got to come together and we definitely got to. Uh, try, try to put some of this nonsense to bed here. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to get into we won't. Know, politics we won't. or anything we won't. like we won't. that. But it's freedom of speech, man, and this is the freest country in the world, and you have your freedoms to express and exercise your, your rights, your thoughts, your beliefs, whatever it, it, it may be. We may not all agree with it, but here in the grand U.S. of A, we have that freedom to express our concerns, as long as like as long as you don't harm anybody. Unfortunately, a year ago, we're Heather Heyer, rest yeah. in power. Unfortunately, and uh, the gentleman, I don't know how much time he's, he's going to get, but uh, I, I, not enough. Well, I don't know, but we do have the right to exercise, you know, I believe, and it's a God-given country, and they have the God-given right to do that. So, you know, God bless them. But I, I agree with you, Kelly. Uh, you know, there's no place for hatred. And there's, there's no place Amen. for assembling uh, anywhere in this country to, to 
spread hate. Just hate. Period. Yeah. Just yeah. hate. Yeah. I, I, I agree, you know, for the right to assemble. I agree for the right to, uh, to, to speak your mind and, uh, and protest and project, but do it in a, in, a, in a civil way. I don't know if it's, uh, you can use that word, it's civil. Not anymore. Not but, right now. But, you know, everyone has a right to express their, their concerns and their feelings in this country. Uh, many people have died for uh, our right to do that, so... Right on. Thank you, Jerry. We agree if we disagree. And thank you for having a, right. And thank you for saying something. You didn't have to say anything. We could have just went on in the sports. Thank you for doing that, brother. No, no. I mean, you know what? Sports, uh, uh, what I love about sports and what I love about doing the show here at Sierra Nova Restaurant is the fact that we, we get to bring everyone together. I mean, we, we're, we have a diverse team here, uh, as you well can see. But sports unites everybody, in my opinion. Yes. Yeah, and we Hopefully. Do. No, well, no, 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 they, they, they do. It That's does. Have you seen the World think Cup? About this. <laughs> I know, but I hope for it. Right. Think about this. We live in the greatest sports town in the, in the, in the world, Chicago. We have one of the worst football teams in the National Football League. But every other Sunday, more or less, when they get over on the late front, you got 65 plus thousand fans screaming or cussing or yelling at the team that Bear we down. call our Chicago Bears. Bear down. That's three and a half hours that you have a, a, a collective of people together. Now we'll never get back if Chase Miller goes in. Or whatever it may be, all at one. Now once we disperse, we all go into our different directions. But that's what sports allow this this country, in my opinion, the society, to, to bring everyone together. Gabe, okay, we just had the World Cup soccer. And it galvanized the entire planet, with the exception of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> but, exactly. but, but that's what, that's what sports can do. It, it, it brings everyone together, all different walks, life, background, the whole nine life. Kelly, it's almost like house music when you're on the lakefront. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> on the lakefront, downtown, yeah. Daily Plaza, South Side, East, West, everywhere in Chicago. You know that house music is our thing. Chicago's yes. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Just like the Bears, just like the Bears. Sox. Bears. House music, that's Chicago. Yeah, thing. and you know what? We'll, we'll, let's move forward. And we have to let you guys know as far as the programming owner is concerned, we are experimenting with some, uh, some new uh, software, to the, a couple of cameras, multi-camera angles. So uh, our normal look is a little bit different. And we just want to try things out because as we prepare and get closer to the national, you know, the start of the regular season of the NFL, we want to give you a new look as well, just like we have a new coaching staff, a new regime, and some new players uh, playing for the beloved Chicago Bears. We're, 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 we're messing with some good, uh, some, some different softwares. So we want to give you a much better, cleaner, professional look once football season kicked off. So uh, thank you so very much for being patient and being a part of what we do here at the Rewind Sports 60. We can't without you, but it won't mean much with <laughs> Exactly. No, but we that love is true. Support. We certainly love the support. No, not to go all Ted Baxter on you, but does this mean I'm going to look better? Yes. <laughs> or is it going to... Well, yeah, I, like, I don't know what better means. Yeah, I mean, yeah, well, what does better, better mean? Yeah, yeah, I, don't was, know what, I don't know what better means. You can't get any better than this, this DC right here. You're pretty good right now. You're pretty good. <laughs> You've been drinking? I've been drinking. <laughs> but before we take our first break... <laughs> what, what are you drinking? I'll have some. Oh, before we take our first break, guys, we do have to... Uh, Say condolences go out to the, the Makita family. Stan Makita, one yes. of the greatest of all time to play for the beloved Chicago Blackhawks, passed away earlier this, this week at the age of 78 from uh, dementia and uh, some other illnesses. Uh, may he rest in peace. And again, thank uh, Stan Makita and his, his, his beautiful family uh, for all the loving memories and, and all the uh, the great excitement that he brought this town back when we were little tykes, uh, you know, back in the late 60s, early 70s, I remember Stan Makita and, and Bobby Hall, the, the, the Golden Jet, and, and that was Chicago Blackhawk hockey had, uh, talking about uniting folks together, it united the city of Chicago. They really were the only team that was really, well, the Chicago Bulls were playing halfway decent back then with Norm Van Leer and, and Jerry Sloan. Sure. But from the late 60s to the early 70s, the Chicago Blackhawks were definitely a fixture in, here in Chicago, and it made us proud. They're basically the only game in town because yeah. the White Sox were usually mediocre. The Cubs were the Cubs after 69 and 70, and yeah. they, they stayed, stayed in the Miami too. I wasn't a big Blackhawks fan. I wasn't a big hockey fan, but I knew the name Stan Peter. Yeah. I knew the name Bobby Hull. I knew the stars. And Tony rest, Esposito. Oh, Tony Esposito, 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 indeed. Yeah. I, uh, rest in peace, man. We're losing our heroes on the regular now, and unfortunately, this is what comes with age. Yeah. You know? Rest in peace, Stan Makita, and uh, condolences to this family. You know, obviously, I was too young to ever watch Stan Makita play, but, you know, the 90s Blackhawks were my generation. And But while I was watching, you know, Chelios Ronick, 
So for and those guys, I had always heard about Stan McKenna and that generation of Blackhawks because that was up until Jonathan Tays and, and company brought the Stanley Cup on, that was the last championship True. that the Blackhawks had. So you were always reminded of that. And you saw you saw the retired numbers in the Raptors. And not to mention the fact that you and I could relate this. The first Wayne's World movie where Stan Mikita was talked about oh, right, ex- exactly. excessively. So, yeah. So, yeah. so so growing up, I was aware of Stan Mikita and the legacy that he presented to this city. I it was just unfortunate that I wasn't old enough to see him play. Yeah, Indeed. Think about you mentioned the first retired number in the Blackhawks franchise history. The first. Right. Still an still all-time leader in games played, I believe, mm-hmm. and, and, and goals. And, 22 years. Unbelievable. Danny, with one franchise. One franchise, right. 20 years. Unbelievable. Revolutionized the game with the curve. Uh, right. uh, yes. 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 I mean, uh, people still have to thank him for, for the service. As a hockey player, and you know, to come from his humble beginnings at Czechoslovakia at time, he's from Slovakia portion of that. Sure, sure. Uh, moving as a young kid to Canada, I think his aunt adopted him, and, uh, and so he took on their last right. name. and. Extremely humble beginnings, and always a humble, affable guy. Everyone talks about hockey players as being probably the most approachable right. uh, athletes, and right. he was the most approachable of the most approachable. Right. Check and check, unfortunately. And, and not just that, he also went up against some of the greatest players yeah. in the history of the game himself. Yeah. You take a look, you know, the original six were still around back then, you know, Montreal, Toronto, New York, Detroit. And he, uh, he went up against Gordy Howe yeah. uh, and some of the other uh, great race, they're all Hall of Famers now. So he played, I want to say, probably with the last golden era of hockey, I guess you could say. You're right, you're absolutely right. And the thing about that, he wasn't a, a very big man. No. And hockey back then in those days was, it's, it's, it's child's play compared to what, the way it was played back then. It was brutal. Those guys didn't have, have any helmets on. They were up and down flying. And, and I heard a late uh, quote from uh, the great Golden Jet Bobby Hall and said, you know, opponents would target Makita to try to rough him up and, 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 and throw him off his game because the Golden Jet was the Golden Jet doing whatever he does, correct? So they said, hey, we got to get to his number two guy, his wingman, Stan Makita, and rough him up. And Stan was able to hold his own and withstand a lot of the heat and a lot of pressure that he faced back during that time. So uh, it's, it's just a, uh, it's a blessing to have a, a gentleman like that who have played for uh, our home team 22 years. That's crazy. I haven't, I haven't done anything for 22 years Ooh. except raise kids and breathe. <laughs> Real quick, early on, he was the guy doling out some of the punishment. That's true. And in one of the retrospectives they were playing over the past week, uh, talking about the... Uh, his daughter was watching him play. Like, Danny, Danny, how come every, every once in a while you have to skate to the other side while the other one else goes back to skate to be with their friends? Like, I can't do that anymore. So he changed his game and was a little bit less than Sinbin. Yeah, and, uh, a little more uh, setting up Bobby Hall and, and winning games. For the there you go. There you go. Danny Carlino, the Italian stallion. Gabe Salgado, the best in the business. And, of course, the one, the only, soon to be the victor of the one. Ah, oh, yeah. $10,000 strong. He's Kelly Lee Wills. Well, keep it locked in. This is the Rewind Sports 60, streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, live broadcasting from the world's famous Serenello's Restaurante right here in the heart of Wheeling. Don't touch the smartphone, the Samsung, the iPad. Don't touch any of those devices. Come on right back. We got some Bears conversation. Reflect on the preseason game. Game number two of the preseason. Mitchell Trubisky. Ah. Where is he? It's more on the Rewind Sports 60. Keep it locked in. It's the end of the quarter. Time for a break in the action. The hottest sports panel in Chicago will get back to the fast-paced action, streaming live on Facebook Live. We're back at it after this quick timeout, so don't you dare touch that iPhone, Android, iPad, Mac, or PC. Lock it in.
Chicago Bears, 0-2 in the preseason. Not a way to get out of the box, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to the Rewind Sports 60. Yours truly, Jerry Riles, the Italian Stallion himself, Danny Carlino, and of course, Kelly Lee Williams! Uh. Going to be $10,000 richer in a matter of days, ladies and gentlemen, and the best freelance sports writer here in the city of Chicago. He's Gabe Silgado. How about them Bears, though, guys? I mean, I, I don't even know where to start, man. I mean... <laughs> They got on the board, hey, man. Neither did they. Kevin White was on the field. Well, 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 well let's call, calm down. I mean, okay. You're sure? Remember, right. Remember, the starters didn't play in the Hall of Fame game, so we were expecting them to be rusty. Beyond that, you know, they obviously put up more points than they did against the Ravens. Um, there's still a few things to work on. But uh, I'm starting to see yes. kind of these, uh, um, how do we say, uh, this, this. His, his love for Chase Daniel? Yes, his love for Chase Daniel. Uh, Tyler Bray is probably going to pass him up on the depth chart with the way the, with the way things are going. I could, I could pass him up on the dang depth chart right now, and I wouldn't have to work out. Why do you, wait, 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 wait. Why do you say that, though? Uh, you look, at, look at the box scores. Look at the stats. He's outperformed them. He's, he's completed more yeah, but passes. But, he's, yeah, but, <laughs> but wait a minute. How are you going now? You just talked about you playing with uh, different units. The starters didn't get much playing time in, in the Cincinnati game. Uh, you got some right. guys. You got, you, got, you got 90 guys trying to make a 53-man roster, which half of them will, obviously will not be on the roster. But with Chase Daniel out there, uh, did he throw one or two interceptions, two interceptions? And then he's still in the interceptions in both games so far. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but but, 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 but Tyler right, he is consistent. <laughs> but you have to, when you say you look at the numbers, you got to read between the, the, the lines and the numbers. Okay, let's there, read between there, them, there. <laughs> Let's see what it says. Let's see what it says between the lines. Some players, Jerry. no, some players, some of the players on the field were either out of position, uh, got beat on the line of scrimmage, and one uh, one of the interceptions that he threw was a deflection off a uh, teammate's head, right? That was, that was a whole thing. Yeah, it was a whole thing, game because, but he's, because, he's because about two or three more sentences. Yeah, but. but you gotta, you gotta be in the right, right position. If you're not making your cuts, if you're not making but, your, your 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 routes precise, that, that, that also doesn't account for you know you know the sacks that he's taken. Listen, that doesn't not, account that doesn't account for overthrown balls. Where Tyler Brage has kind of been on the money. No, it does because the I can't I can't remember if he was throwing it to whoever he was throwing it to. They were out of position. They were out of position. He threw the ball where it was expected to be thrown. The receiver was out of position, which allowed for that one interception. The other was because the lineman was being pushed back into him, and the ball deflected off his helmet. So those are two interceptions that occurred that he's the quarterback, and it's going to be pencil down as an interception. But that's what I mean when you got to read between the lines to see why those interceptions were thrown. Well, we could read between the lines all we want, but what's supposed to Staff is going to look at is when Tyler Bray's out there on the field, the Bears are scoring points. Chase Daniels out there, they're not exactly yeah, doing it. Yeah, but today, that's against third and fourth stringers. Well, that's, those, half those they're, guys they're, will be here mopping up the floor at Sierra Nellos by the time it's over with. They Come probably will, but they're still scoring points. If they switched places, Tyler Bray and Chase Daniels would not have mattered. I believe that Chase Daniels is the quarterback with the most experience with this offense. Yes. That's why he came over. Right. And I don't see any of that experience showing on the field. But it, He's with second stringers, fine, but you need to be a leader. You're supposed to be a leader with that offense. You're supposed to know, hey, if he's not getting on guys, if he's not, what was he doing after the interception? No, but see, again, gentlemen, you guys have to understand, it, it, it's preseason, and there's a lot of, a, a lot of information to digest. Now, you, you got to consume it, then you have to get out there and execute it. And after two preseason games, I mean, there's a lot of information that these guys are, are processing. And you got to be able to get out there and get the job done. And you're absolutely right, Kelly. He has the most experience. He's a very, uh, what my understanding is a very intelligent, intelligent man. He knows how to translate the book to the field. Mm -hmm. But if you got a receiver who doesn't know how to transfer the book to the field, or lineman that doesn't know how to transfer the book to the field, you're gonna have what? Miscues, mistakes, INT. But he's been practicing with those guys, hasn't he? He's been leading those guys in practice, hasn't he? Apparently he wasn't leading them very well because he's thrown to these people, he knows that these people have these So why wouldn't he go elsewhere? He should know what's going on with that offense. He knows, because so he's because that, no, you said be a leader. And, and yes. what a leader does, does not step down to the level of competition. The leader raises the level of competition up. Now, if you're performing with subpar individuals, and, and nothing against these players, third or fourth strings, who's trying to make any NFL roster or a practice squad, and, you, and you're trying to help them graduate or move up to the professional rank, it's a different Kelly. 
it is a total. And I've never played in the National Football League before, Joey's but my understanding played. is, my understanding. Well, he only played at Ohio State. Yeah. O H I O. There you go. Yeah. Dot, 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 dot. No. But uh, Urban Meyer. No, but hey, take it easy now. His players have said players who have laced it up. Kurt Warner has talked about it. Jim Miller, former Chicago Bear, has talked about it. It's a different animal from even from college to the pro ranks, from practice, bourbon A, to game speed. He right. said it's totally different. So you got players who may look decent, you know, hey, I'm looking good at bourbon A, I'm running around. But then when they get out to real live action and they're going up against other uh, other teams, other guys who are trying to make the football team as well, it's, it's a different breed, brother. It's, right. it's really, really different. And so with, with Chase Daniel trying to make a, a, a point for himself to show Mitchell Trubisky how to run an offense and show these other guys how you should play at a particular level, and they're not adjusting, Kelly. How Kelly, do you, half these guys, on, they're not going to be on the team. He's played four games in the NFL they're in his not career. How is he going to show anybody to do anything? Yeah. That's my point. Been a misery. Dilly tell, Dilly. Tell, tell, Chase Daniel. Tell us this. So when the Bears when the Bears go to Denver next week and, Bears. and Chase Daniel has another game where he's only completing three or four passes, Bit of misery. are you still going to defend him? Well, I'm going to look How at the whole... How are you defending No, 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 no. Seriously. And I don't want to say like I'm defending him, but I'm going to look at the whole body of work. And if you want to look at the body of work, I mean, wait a minute. Mitchell Trubisky is supposed to be the second... Two for four with four yards. Second coming Trubisky. of Jesus Christ. And we'll look at his numbers. So what are you talking about the numbers? Lord, forgive me. Well, here. Uh, first of all... Yeah, Lord, forgive me. <laughs> this Sunday. Uh, don't, so don't use the Lord's name in debate. Exactly. Right. <laughs> put, put, put him on the Bears. That's just bad. Yeah. Has yeah. he suffered enough? Oh, gee. I mean, he already got crucified. You don't have to put him on the pairs. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, I think I'm headed to the pit of misery myself. Really, really. Man, man does not represent us. Yeah, you mentioned uh, about, about, about practice. Uh, anybody can look good in shorts and run around cars. Right. right. I know I can look good in and shorts. And you mentioned execution. And, and to uh, paraphrase old Buccaneers coach John McKay, I think you're, all, you're all in favor of it. I'm in favor of it. I'm in favor of the excuse of all of them, man. I mean, come on. This is... But I think the, the fairest way to assess him may be in the next week or so. Yes. Uh, in the next game, because maybe Bray will get the opportunity to play with the group that Daniels is playing with. And you'll be able to say, like, okay, now who's doing better with those players? And also, they'll be playing against the second string versus the third string opposition. And see. And that's, that's, that's like a fair... Ask, uh, the, ask, the, ask the question, Danny, why? Did not Mitchell Trubisky play in the first game, the Hall of Fame game? He should play the least ten plays. State secret. No, At no, least. no, no, no. That guy has no. not. He's got third. He's got no. twelve stars well, in the here, NFL and twenty-five total in his career. One series wouldn't have killed him. Well, here, here, one here. series wouldn't have killed him. No, here's a couple. Something. Couple reasons. Couple reasons. First of all, he, he is your franchise quarterback, and you don't want him. So's Tom Brady. He's always in the end preseason even, plan. Well, you don't. You don't even want to put him in in, in any type of harm's way. Now uh, keep in mind, it's five preseason games. Right. Normally it's four, and the league is looking to cut it down to three. And keep in mind, the starters only usually play three preseason games because you want to get to the regular season with a 53-man healthy roster. It's so that's why you have to you have to pick and choose when you put some guy out there, especially if he's a franchise player, and especially if he's you know what you're banking on for that season. You don't want to put them and talk about Tom Brady. Yeah. Tom Brady is not going to play in all four preseason games. But he did play a little bit. I mean, he yeah, plays that's a what series. They do, a he, little bit. But not even too risky. Got in the series. Two for four. In the second game, two for four with four yards. Two for four with four yards. What are you going to do with that? How do you learn? He'll he's play. not learning anything. He'll he hasn't played on the field. How do you play. learn? I see where Kelly's coming from, but he'll play a little more against them. Right. But he's already had two games and he's learned nothing. He's done nothing. This is a new no, you got, you new take offense. The Hall of you got to take the Hall of Fame game out of the equation. Right? Oh, okay. You, you do. And normally, when you think about the first preseason, the starters usually play one series. Play one series and then they're out. Okay, then the we don't have to worry game, about Roquan Smith, do we? Because we don't have to worry about Roquan Smith playing. That's a whole other. That's, that's a that's a, worms right hey, there. We'll, we'll get into that okay. after a short time out. Okay. Because that's a that's a big story that's uh, heating up in Chicago as well. And that's a stupid it's, story. I, I I don't know how you lay. If it's we'll, we'll talk or about not. it. We'll talk about it. I don't know if you call it stupid or not. But again, eliminate the the Hall of Fame game. The Cincinnati field game, let's chalk that up as the first game. He got one series, his numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Four yards, Jerry. Yeah, I agree. 
Remember one, two, this. three, four. We could have gotten four yards. Remember this. I, one yard each. I know it's been a long time since we won a Super Bowl. Well, we're right faster than that. Super Bowl I'm team. Right that Super Bowl team didn't win any preseason games. Say it. Didn't win any preseason games. But that was a well season. They were, uh, you know, NFC runners up. And they had Vic, uh, uh, about, uh, about, Buddy the, Ryan, and they had the, the best linebackers in the world. Understand. You guys have to understand the preseason for those guys who are looking to make an NFL roster. That's what the preseason is all about. And those, if you don't shine, if you. If you watch the Cincinnati Beagles game, Campbell, the second, or Campbell, the third, the defensive, or the cornerback of the Chicago Bears, number 31, yeah. oh my God, he was getting eaten up left and right. I mean, he was, dude, now you talk about us going out there and play, yes. he was getting eaten up all the way down the field on one of the drives to Cincinnati, I think it was in the uh, the third quarter. The kid, the kid's gonna, he's probably got his lunch pail. And he's probably got his hard hat, and he's looking for another job because the Bears, they gave us, they say, give us, we need our playbook back, man. Right. Thank you so very much. There's a door. Good luck to you. Because he had a, he had a, he had a tough night. Now that kid had a tough night. Well, if you're gonna look over, look at for uh, Trubisky. We should look at for the rest of the team. I mean, come on, we can't just do it for one guy. That makes him a favorite over everyone else. And well, if you he is a favorite, he should not be else. a favorite. He He's should not. It's a team quarterback. game still. You're right, they you're have right. to follow this guy, and they're not gonna follow this guy if he's not on the field sweating and getting hurt with everybody else. He hasn't been in the last two games. Two for four, for four yards is Kelly, not a franchise quarterback that? make. You just said. Yes. Playing on the field, getting, and getting hurt. Like yes, because else. they're getting hurt. They're going to get hurt. Once you're getting hit, I didn't you say want, get injured. I said get hurt. Daniel out there. Yes, yeah, sure. I, I, I especially want Chase Daniel out there to get up just to get out. Yes, let him get. I love it. Dilly well, dilly, pit him as You're you're right to a point. I mean, you got a guy who's not proven in any way, shape, or form. In any way, he, is, he the, is he is he the best no. of, the, of the group? <laughs> yeah, well, we but, I mean, do we know that? Do we even know that right yeah, now? Better. Yeah, I'll mention Trubisky. Sure I'll hope so. Do, no, I'm sorry. Do we actually know that he's better than Tyler Brand, Chase Dangle right now? 12 starts. Who, 30, 20, they're, they're, yes. They're 12 starts, 12 yeah. NFL starts, True. 25 starts total in his career. We don't know he's maybe better. Because we haven't seen anything. That's my point. Let's see something. Two games, two preseason games, we got to say it's a watch. You know what does, you know what teams do that? Losing teams. Losing teams talk about this. Forget about the first two preseason games. And we have to put our franchise quarterback in. Well, see, but four and twelve, that's Jerry. That's, that's, that's four not, and twelve. That's not but true. As long as training, that's not true. As long as training camp is, and however many preseason games they have, they know the first day they go to Bourbon A, at least half that roster is already set. Exactly. Maybe position wise, exactly. who's first string or second string might be decided. Right. Then it's up to the other 20, 20 some odd guys that's who's going to fill in those spots. But you know, yeah, that's but, it. but right why? Along, that's but why is it like that on this know. particular there team? Be more, this team should have more question marks. Yes. On it. Oh, it has they a lot should, more question they marks. Should, they should pull the Cleveland Browns and take the C out. Oh my God. Win, so you got to earn it. They're talking about the Cleveland Browns before they're talking about the Chicago Bears right now. And that's really sad. They should. And that's really sad. They should. They should. They won one game last year. We now, should... now, if you say Baker Mayfield is better than Mitchell, I didn't. Mitchell. No, no, I didn't no, say I, that. I said if you say that, I, you might have a point. You might have a point because he's a little bit more seasoned as far as playing on, on Saturday and or big time games. Exactly. Too. But it doesn't exactly. matter because he's a Brown, no, and we're talking about the Bears: Boom. Tyler Bray, Chase Daniel, Boom. Mitchell Trubisky. These three gentlemen, we Those have no are idea. Chicago Bears, and we have no idea who's better right now. We literally have no idea. No, no, no. Mitchell, no, we don't. Mitchell, Mitchell, Mitchell is he's, we don't he's, know. he's a better athlete. He has a stronger arm. And I think the mechanics are, are still in development <laughs> stages. So, I mean, when you put those three guys out there, you, you, you know that Mitchell Trubisky is going to edge him out. Now, it may not be a big you wide margin. You know he's a great athlete? Achilles Smith. It's not gonna, it's, it may not be a big wide margin, Ouch. but you know that Mitch Trubisky is. You know who's a great athlete? Ken now. Ouch. Let's really? see. Yes, that's what I, I haven't seen anything from this guy. Cave McNown? That's why I mentioned Cave McNown because until this man at least done something on the field in the preseason or anywhere, I don't see anything. What are we What are we talking about? We're talking about a franchise quarterback? No. We're, talk, we're talking about a hope. We're talking about that's hope. That's true. That's true. That's it. That's true. And until we see concrete evidence of this man other than two for four and four yards in the last game that he's played, no, you're not going to tell me. Man. No, we can't go. go. I'm not throwing this because this team's... Is the window more than four yards away? Right. That's exactly. Yeah. Is the window no, wait, more than four wait, yards hang away? On, wait, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We are really getting caught up in some minuscule numbers of Mitchell We're Bears fans. After, after the second preseason yes. game? Yes. Think about it. Because this is the second year. Are you year. kidding me? This is, 
new coach, new offense, and players, most of which are still trying, are young players still trying to acclimate themselves to the league. We all know that, you know, playing under John Fox last year wasn't exactly a recipe for success. So now you're basically starting over, and it would help to give these guys a little more playing time. And they didn't want to start Mitchell Trubisky last year because they listen, had to. Listen, was so the terrible. offensive line for the Chicago Bears, Kyle it's, Long didn't, didn't play. Uh, who, who else didn't uh, play on that offensive line? But they're not putting these guys out there. Trevathan did not play on the defensive side of the ball. Guys, you guys have to seriously understand, you're not going to put your, your product out there on the field. Trevathan can't play. Bingo! You're not going to put any of you guys out there until they're ready because you need to take a 53-man roster to the start of regular season healthy. Well, you have to do that. Well, so what you're saying. Run first. Guys, so, listen. Right, Drew, so what you're you have saying. to understand. I'm telling you how the, 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 the groundwork is laid in the National Football League. Uh -huh. You're... You got your 53 man roster. You know who's going to be on that team. Now, there may be some guys that's going to beat this guy out, that guy out, but those other guys, those other 40 guys, 37 guys, whatever it may be, they are looking for homes someplace else around the National Football League. They're looking to get on the, 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 the practice squad. They want to hang around the National Football League and do their work. Now, the guys on the 53 man roster, the Mitchell Trubisky's, the Tariq Cohen, the, 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 the Jordan Howard, all these guys. This is the, the formula when you talk about formula for success. Most of these guys, they start to play themselves into shape week one. Okay? The offensive line usually does not gel together until between week six and week eight. It comes, it's a different animal from practice to preseason to the regular season. That's just simply how it goes. So to say I want to put my quarterback out there because he doesn't have enough experience, he needs to find, mm -hmm, it's not going to work that way. It doesn't work that way, and it hasn't worked that way. So, now in the third game of the, regular, of the preseason, you will see those guys, the starters, play two and a half to three quarters of football. And what makes you the think fourth? that they'll play that two and a half to three quarters of football with any standard. kind of good, with any kind of greatness, I with know. any kind of We're not at all? For greatness. I'm looking for greatness. Looking Absolutely, for I want a great pass. Listen. I want a great run. Kelly, I want something great to happen. You don't want greatness in the preseason. Well, also, what they you do don't is, want what it. They what they do is that now? Come on, now that's what they do is no, Come on now. In the preseason, come on. We, they don't break out the. They're not going to do all the trick plays they did last year. I don't want a trick play. I want a play that scores ten yards. I want Mitchell Trubisky to throw something. You're talking about Dave McNow. Hey, McDowell had a pretty good preseason. Where is he? Hey. Hey. At least he has something good. Yeah, in the preseason. At least he has something Where good. Where did that get you? What is, hey, he got a couple years, didn't he? In the preseason. Hey, here's the thing, though. And Mitchell Trubisky has nothing. <laughs> he has nothing. Whenever you see a kid that has, you know, like it's a third hand me down that got like it really on sale. Yeah. Uh, or maybe Marshalls or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not Dave McDowell. Yeah. Do, do you feel sad for the kid? Yeah, I go, why'd you do that? I asked the mom and dad, why would you do that to the poor kid? He's going to be traumatized the rest of his life. the nameplate or something. Like, walk around with it. Like, yeah, be that as it may right now on the Bears quarterback experience and progress roster, K. McNown, Mitchell Trubisky, until he does something worthy. In, even in regular season games as well. Guys, this He's is done nothing problem. last year. We're going to take nothing. a certain time out here because we need to cool things off. I, I think this. I think the summer heat may be beginning to summer. Oh, no, 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 no. 4 and 12. I don't understand. 4 and 12. I, I don't get it, man. I certainly don't get it. But we don't get the uh, the holdout of the Bears' top pick. Linebacker Roquan Smith. The guy's still holding out. Now, who's right? Who's wrong? This is Steve Panel of Danny Carlino, the Italian Stallion, Kelly Lee Williams, and of course, Gabe Salgado. Going to break it down right here in the world's famous Sierra Nello's Restaurant, the Italiano. Keep it locked in. This is the Rewind Sports 60. end of the quarter. Time for a break in the action. The hottest sports panel in Chicago will get back to the fast-paced action, streaming live on Facebook Live. We're back at it after this quick timeout, so don't you dare touch that iPhone, Android, iPad, Mac, or PC. Lock it in. Thank you. 
Come on out. The world's famous Sierra Novo's restaurant, the Italiano, right here in the heart of Wheeling. Folks, we're located right here on Restaurant Road, Milwaukee Avenue, the corner of Milwaukee Avenue and Lake Cliff Road, right here in the heart of Wheeling, just outside the greatest city in the world. That, of course, Chicago, Illinois. Got to have my mimosa, that's for sure. Fantastic, man. It's the best Sunday brunch in the area. Ladies and gentlemen, come on down. They get started at 10 a.m. They go all the way to 2 p.m. Every Sunday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Come on out. Get your uh, fun loving waffles. Fun loving waffles. Over there. <laughs> we got fun loving waffles. The, the fun loving waffles, the uh, happy uh, mashed potatoes and everything. We got meat. Yeah. I did, I did. Fun loving meat. The meat loving. The fun loving potatoes. Fun loving brisket. Fun loving biscuits. Fun loving all types of food. That's what we love. I did the omelet today. Did you? Yeah. What did you have in there? I had a tomato. I had uh, a couple different kinds of cheese. Yeah. So, I've never seen somebody so happy over there. I know, right? I had tomato. I had tomato. Like I had a, cheese. It's like a good school because this is the first time I've had an omelet in a few weeks. You know what? It's interesting because uh, Derek McIntyre made me an omelet last week and it was it was delicious. It was the biz bomb. You, brought, Dick, Dick, you made it a little bit later. I did. I ate, I ate I ate kind of like half of it here and then I ate, ate the other half later on. And they, it, it, both halves taste fantastic. It kicks well. I'm going to give me an omelet. It really does. I'm going to give me an omelet, yeah. You know, there's one thing that I, I don't know about you guys before we get into our more bears conversation. Jerry Riles, Danny Carlino, the Italian Stallion, Kelly Lee Williams, and of course Gabe Sogato. But, you know, before we get into the Rokon Smith and, and the Chicago Bears and all that good stuff, I'm, I don't know about you guys as far as food and, and eating habits. Look at Marty B. Speaking of food and eating yeah. habits, yeah. eating is definitely yeah. one of my habits. Got the bacon. Yes, so I much. The definitely man on the street. Have... The man on the street, Marty B, taking yes. care of business, that's for sure. You definitely have eating habits. Boom. <laughs> business. Business. <laughs> but the one thing, I don't know about you, gentlemen, but I, when it comes to food, I love food, I enjoy eating food, and, uh, you know, I eat it more often late at night than I do earlier in the day, which I understand uh, is a bad habit. Uh, 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 yeah, I'm the doctor. But I also, I love, I'm a big fan of leftovers. I'm a big fan of leftovers. We had some, uh, well, I won't mention the uh, the establishment, but we had some nice Chicago deep dish style pizza. And, uh, and, and, you know, it was fresh and it was delicious and it was very good. But it was one of the, the big family style pizza. So, you know. The manhole cover? Sorry. Boom. So yeah, the next right, day, I just the next day yes. I get a little bit more. The next ne day after that, I get a little bit more. I love, I love leftover food. You get you a nice cold breakfast, huh? That's all gone now, man. It's all gone. And you had your omelet. But I mean, but you guys, yeah, you yeah. had your one omelet. That's enough for you. No, but I mean, are you guys similar to to, to, to that that you know leftovers? Are sometimes well, even better than the, the, the some things. Some things are better. Order. Some things are better the second day. Well, I, you know what? Personally, you know, being married three times, I understand the love for leftovers, but I have to you know, keep it to the food right now. <laughs> and, I'm and, I'm, <laughs> and um, I talk about, yes, tacos, like the next day pizza, the best pizza yes. the next day, yes, best at that time because you're like, oh, yeah, yum, yum, yum. At the time, you're like, yeah, okay. But in the morning, you got that good boom, like that full of them all with that Jerry Wells got from this show that right here. You need to come out and get some food, those full of them waffles. What's up? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Derek. <laughs> see, the one danger of leftovers is somebody sneaking in the fridge and eating them. And eating them, right. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm picky when it comes to leftovers, but if you, if you leave leftover pizza in the fridge, it's going to be gone. It's going to be gone. Really? I'm an Ninja Turtle when it comes to eating. Now, have you guys ever done this? And we'll get into our beer conversation. Back in the day when I was at the Ohio State University, we'd have pizza and we'd be, you know, boom, boom, boom. And then you fall asleep, you pass out in your bed, and the pizza box is on the floor, and then we you wake up in the morning. You didn't use the pizza box as your blanket? <laughs> <laughs> Pepperoni on your yeah. But You wake up in the morning, and you go, hey, man, there's still some pizza. <laughs> oh, some might, as, might as well. Hey, breakfast. You might as well. The cardboard is touching the floor, not the pizza. So. Yes. <laughs> eat that. You eat that pizza. So and you had the shag carpeting in your <laughs> Take it easy now. Come on, man. Nasty. <laughs> yeah, I was using it as an adjective, not a verb. <laughs> okay. This is a family show. Italian, 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 <laughs> Kelly Lee Williams, Power, Gabe Salgado. <laughs> Guys, you know, we talk about the Bears and uh, the, the preseason. And everybody's, you know, there's a learning curve there with the exception of uh, Ryan Pace. But Ryan Pace is back in the business because what? He's the like Rokon, love you. Rokon Smith. Speaking of this, I didn't know this. I don't know if you guys heard about this, but George McCaskey, you know. Yeah, that guy, yeah. That guy. You know, heard of him. You know, he recently did this, and Marty B, I don't know if you heard of this either. Marty B will be joining us later in the program. 
George McCaskey visited a neighbor in Chicago, in Wheeling here, and delivered him his personal season tickets to his doorstep. Why? I, I heard they had like sometimes either. Other representatives, former Bears, the, the, the Staley, the mascot, but the, the George chief, McCaskey the knocked at his grand door. Ding dong. Well, how do you get the door? Ding dong. Get the door. I'll get it. What else has got? Whoa. Do? Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> George <laughs> McCaskey delivered the guy season tickets to his home. He said, "Thank you. Thank you for being a lifelong season ticket holder. We really value you as our, you know, as a, as a, as a fan." He said, "We know that it's been very difficult over the past few years." We thank, we thank you for sticking with us, and hopefully things will get better in the near future. Here are your tickets. Is that crazy or not? You know what? No, because he was in Willing. Now, if it was crazy, if he went to Harvey, let him go to Harvey with those tickets and see what happens. Wait, wait, wait. Who, you who? Wait, wait, What's wait, your wait, name? Wait, wait, who the hell wait, wait. Harvey's got season tickets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what? There's some good. We can't even pay the cops. Marijuana's hey, not legal yet. People are making money down there. They can pay for tickets no, wait, with there's me money. There's somebody in Harvey that had season tickets. What? What? Black folk can't get season tickets? Now, see, that's no, some. That's no. some. That's some. That's some. That's some I'm, I'm here to say. No. No. Harvey can't get season tickets. Okay, fine. Hard. Okay. How about Chicago Heights? Chicago Heights? Can we go to Chicago Heights? Maybe. Uh, the only season South Holland. How about South Holland? The only season tickets they're getting is somebody say, hey man, you want to go to the Cubs or the Bear game? That counts. I mean, why can't he get those tickets, huh? Hey, George, what, George McCaskey, get my tickets. Where my tickets at? All right, come to Lansing. Give me some tickets there. Wheeling. Of course he went to Wheeling. Everybody looks like him in Wheeling. Hey, Take you know, it easy. Ain't no surprise. Take it easy. Well, we're talking, we want to give George McCaskey some props because mean, he went to somebody's uh, house at Wheeling. A bunch of old guys with white hair. Yeah, that's what, I mean, come on, let's face it. Paul was the first one to get the tickets to. Oh, gee, I got white hair. Ah, <laughs> really? Get out of here. No. No, I just thought, I thought that was a pretty, uh, a good gesture on, on his part. Publicity in, in stunt. I, I, it's, Absolutely. It's a very good publicity if stunt. It, if, it was, if it was illegitimate, he would have went to the South Side. Somebody on the South Side would have liked some tickets delivered by George McCaskey. <laughs> that guy probably sees George McCaskey every day at the golf course. So, it's not really, so it doesn't really, it doesn't really impress. I'm not impressed. I don't know. Hey, he's like, hey, buddy, coming over, bringing the tickets. Camera will be there later. I mean, come on. Okay, there's no camera. Unlikelihood of a Harvey season ticket holder may be giving a couple of free tickets to somebody. Right. Go to free, go to Harvey, get some free tickets. Uh, uh, no, 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 I can't, I can't put them down there for the free ticket. That's a little bit too much. That's a little bit too much. Okay, I did cut my sister. <laughs> no, George wouldn't make it out. George okay, wouldn't make okay, it out. How about calling somebody yeah, there and meeting? Make it in. <laughs> how about calling somebody that lives there and meeting in a neutral location? Yeah, like, have, have them take an Uber there and throw the tickets out the window. <laughs> <laughs> if you miss any portion of the Rewind Sports 60, ladies and gentlemen, this is what you did. <laughs> Maybe some big Daniel now. I don't think, Here you go. I don't think he needs an Uber. Uh, yeah, jump into madness. 847 This is the Rewind Sports 60. Would you take a uh, limo to Harvey? Let's get to some serious uh, matters here. Segment. Bear with us. Let's get, yeah, bear with us for sure. <laughs> Guys, let's get back to the, uh, the, the Bears conversation, a serious topic that's on the table. Roquan Smith, the uh, yeah. Bears' number one draft pick out of... Uh, what is it, uh, Georgia. Georgia. Yeah. Georgia. And uh, the guy is outstanding. He has incredible speed. He has incredible uh, field awareness. He can go from side to side, east and west, north and south. Unbelievable. A physical specimen. We just uh, had uh, Brian Erlacher inducted into the National Football League Hall of Fame. Erlacher. Congratulations to him. This guy, he may, he, he may bust the mold, man. This Rohan Smith, is a, he's a beast. He's an animal. Well, right now, he's as fast as me. And me. And him. Yeah. No, he's still fast than all of us, man. But it means, he may not be on the field, but, it means but as he's much still, as how fast he's still, that's exactly he's what it still means. pretty fast. He's still pretty fast. Now, the, 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 the sticking point is the Bears gave him a guaranteed money. Um, but he has yet to sign. He's the only player in the National Football League who was drafted who has not signed a deal with their respective teams. And one reason, the major sticking point is the fact that uh, I guess he's had some issues on the field, whether it's uh, misconduct with the, the referees or other opponents because it's a heated, violent game. And he evidently gets very uh, emotional and passionate about the sport. And sometimes it gets the best of him. So the Bears want to make sure that he does not have any issues on the football field, particularly with oppositions, his own teammates, and more importantly, the officials. So they're saying, hey, 
and the, but the paperwork is pretty much already done. The, the, stick, the sticking issue mainly has been concerned over the new helmet for helmet rule. Right. And what they're worried about is, you know, him getting suspended or fined for, you know, colliding with somebody. We have talked about how, how poorly this rule is being implemented this season. And what they're saying is, if, if this happens, we want to take away some of your guaranteed money. Right. And, you know, I, I, I kind of don't blame them. Because, so, who's, because whose side are you favoring? The Bears? A Rupon Smith Rupon, and his agent. Rupon Smith, because obviously a lot of that guarantee money is what he's going to get right off the bat. Because you know now with the new rookie scale wage that they have under the current CBA, you're not going to get the bulk of your money until the end of your contract. So that signing bonus money and whatever you're guaranteed right off the top is the bulk of what you make in there and they're going. And uh, this was uh, somewhat of a sticking issue with uh, Joey Bolson with the Chargers, who, by the way, him and Rupon Smith share an agent. Same agency. And. Um, uh, his issue was regarding uh, his signing bonus, which they were trying to, you know, I guess they were trying to give him less than what he, what he ended up getting. Mm -hmm. But um, obviously, you know, they're, they're worried about setting precedents and, you know, future draft picks and things of that nature. But, you know, the guy's trying to get, you know, as much money as he can, and, you know, until the bulk of his contract kicks in later. Right. So I kind of understand where he's coming from. And obviously, you know, this new helmet rule, they're probably going to review it at the end at the end of this season any, again anyway. Well, they should review it at the end of this week. Right. Yeah, no exactly. kidding. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Did you exactly. see that when special teams play in the, yeah. the bears Bengals game? Exactly. Like, he, 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 he tackled him. It was like a, a knee ankle tackle. Like So now he's lowering his head. I, don't, I never I never got, I got a concussion in my knee before. I'm right. And, the, and, and, the, and the, the ball carrier actually lowered his helmet into... It was a lower body play. Right, and it's like, it didn't make any sense. It, it made no sense whatsoever. It even, Zero. It seemed like even the referee, when he called, it kind of has to, like, oh, I guess I got to call it. It, it, made, it. I don't know if I it should. It was ridiculous. But. It was ridiculous. And I, I, I'm, I'm watching with casual football fans, and they're like, that's, that's a bad call. They're like, that's a bad call. It's ridiculous. And I saw the highlights for the, the Cincinnati announcers, they kind of Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Gabe, you're, you're, you're right. Kelly, who do you side with? The Bears and their stance and their position because they want to make sure that this guy stay on the football field? Or do you you, you, you side with Rokon Smith and his, his agency saying, hey man, just guarantee money that you guys said, hey, I signed on the dotted line, give me my money. Rokon Smith was drafted because of his aggression. Rokon Smith was drafted in the first round because he was a monster linebacker. Now the Bears want him to change how his aggression is implemented. And yes, it has to happen along the lines of what's the, the new helmet rule. But you can't touch this man's money because of that. This man is coming from one area of playing. He's been playing his entire life this way, this aggressive. And this is what he was drafted for. Now he's going to get fined. He's going to get fined because this is how he's played his entire career. You can't do that to this person and, and this year, after a year or two, maybe, after this implemented rule. You can't do that coming off with the rule coming into this year like this. The Bears have to suck it up and pay those fines. They knew this man was aggressive. They knew how this man was going to be a fierce babbler on the field. And that's going to take, that's going to be helmet to helmet hit sometimes until he learns this is not this is not on Roquan Smith, this is on the Bears. They need to pay that money to get this man on the field so he can play this game and make this team better. Danny Carmelo. I see his I see his view up to a point, especially regarding the new rule, that rule is stupid for everybody. But again, for everybody. Whether you however you played your game, I mean this is gonna affect every single because everyone this is, this is taking normal plays. Normal plays and fairly innocuous plays as far as they are many there are in football. And making them illegal right. at this point. So there's that. But I mean, as far as his aggression toward opponents, maybe getting in their face, or maybe having a shoving match, or, or arguing with referees, stuff like that, like that's always kind of been an issue. You're not. That's right. not what you're supposed to do. Right. So, and ultimately, forget, forget about the money. Let's say he gets suspended. They can't have someone else serve the suspension for him. Right. You know what I mean? So, right. What, right. Is it really the Bears' fault? Right. But we're assuming that he's going to get suspended. We're assuming that he's not, not going to learn. Right. right. I mean, if he's, if he's a first-round draft pick, we have to expect that he's going to learn how to play as he goes along. But the fine and the suspension is but a it, way of forcing him to learn. Too. But that's fine. Right. But right. Then, and, and, and if, I, I and wouldn't the, like it either. But And the Bears should pay that fine because he is used to but playing the Bears this saying, way. And I, I and I agree with you guys, and I'm, I'm, on, I'm, I'm sitting on the fence with this because I, I see both sides. And I understand it's a business. There's no question about it. So for Rohan and, and, and his agency, they're like, hey, wait a minute, man. This is guaranteed money, like you said, that I can get up front. 
you're not touching that. You're not touching that. But the Bears are like saying, but wait a minute. You can't guarantee us that you're not going to have some type of infraction on the football field that is going to cost us a fine. Plus, you're, if you get suspended, now you're jeopardizing the other 10 of your teammates on the football field, which means we have to make an adjustment as far as our defensive scheme is concerned. So it's not only affecting you, the individual, personally, you're affecting everyone as far as the team concept is concerned. So I see both sides of this deal. Flip side. But I, but I, but I agree with you. The Bears knew what they were getting when they drafted him, and they drafted him so high that they said, we need this missing piece in, to the puzzle that we have. You can't change so that piece if you can't. You should not. If you know what you're getting, and you say, I'm going this high to get this guy because he's going to make a major impact, immediate impact on our defensive side of the ball. We kept the defensive coordinator, Vic Fangio. We want this guy. You can't just say, well, you know what? You got to pull back. We want you to go, but we don't want you to play this way. That's the reason why they got him, Dave. Let, let's not forget that. Um, the, this situation is part of a much bigger problem with the league, and that is a concern with head injuries, yep. especially for retired but players. But this guy should not be the, the, right. the, 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 the poster boy right. for that. And, and, and that's getting, what they're and making him. And I'm getting, in, I'm getting into that. If, if, if the league is so concerned, here's the way I look at it. You know, obviously, you know, you take a look at how many retired players are, you know, are dealing, dealing with issues now. Well, here's, here's what I say. I played the game for a few years myself. And there are so many incidental helmet to helmet hits that happen during the course of the game. The referees aren't always going to see them. But now they're basically telling the officials, you know, flag every helmet to helmet hit that you see. I say, if you're, go if you're going to do it, give the retired players their pension sooner and guarantee them health care for life if you're so concerned about it. Right? Other than that, don't take it out on today's players and make them change how they were how they were used to playing. Just, just Well, they, uh, they do have a point because the CT and everything that's going on with these former football players and these retired football players. So they have to take a stance and they have to make uh, a, a precedent, so to speak, as far as helmet-to-helmet -helmet contacts are concerned because it's for the longevity and the, the, their livelihood once they're done with the game of football. He's Gabe Togato, Kelly Lee Williams, Danny Carlino, the Italian Stallion. Yours truly, Jerry Riles. Folks, keep it up in broadcast from the world's famous Serenello's Restaurant Day right here in the heart of Wheeling. When we come back, Kelly Lee Williams has that American flag turned all upside down. Your commander-in-chief of the free world, he's turning the National Football League on this year, or at least he's trying to do it. Hey, if you don't come out and, pro and support the national anthem, you're going to get fired. That's it. We're taking your bu buckets away. We're taking everything away. Keep it locked in. The national anthem, Donald Trump, the National Football League, coming up right here on the Rewind Sports 60. Did he say buck buckets? It's the end of the quarter. Time for a break of the action. The hottest sports panel in Chicago will get back to the fast-paced action, streaming live on Facebook Live. We're back at it after this quick timeout, so don't you dare touch that iPhone, Android, iPad, Mac, or PC. Lock it in. Real quick before we say goodbye, Marty. I have 
a thought or two about our beloved Stan Makita. Oh, I'd yeah. like to end the show on Yes, sir. This, if I may. So appropriate, Stan wore number 21. So we have 21 reasons. Well, we'll never forget Stan Makita. For the curve, stick reinvented. And the 1,467 points he scored with that stick. For the heart, Art Ross and Lady Bing trophies he won, all in one season, twice. Ah, I remember this distinctly. In 1961, our only Stanley Cup that we had won since the 1930s. For the best donuts in Aurora, <laughs> Illinois. That's a winner. For his hard work and Iron Man mentality, so symbolic of Chicago. For the way he swung a golf club, almost as well as he swung a hockey stick. For the amazing family he and Jill created. For playing much bigger than his five foot nine inch, 160 pound frame. Five nine? Unbelievable. For the nine all-star games he appeared in. For reuniting with the team and the fans in 2008 for one very important goal. For the C on the sweater he wore so gracefully. For helping the hearing impaired play the game we all love so much. For the countless autographs he signed. For the way he listened to his daughter and got out of the penalty box. <laughs> for bringing the Special Olympic Olympics to Chicago. For the generations of kids he inspired to lace up their skates. For being there in 2010, 2013, and 2015 to witness history. For knowing he'd always be looking down on us from the rafters. His number 21, the Blackhawk uniform that he wore so proudly. God bless Stan McKee. Thank you, Marvin. You're very welcome. Thank you so very much. Very thank welcome. you all for being a part of the Rewind Sports 60. If you miss any portion, please check out our Facebook Live, YouTube Live, or on CLTV Tuesdays at 3 a.m. or on Comcast Access on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Channel 17 in Lake Cloud. And, of course, on Wednesday, 7 o'clock p.m. Channel 19, Channel 35. Folks, we've had a great time. I want you to have a fantastic rest of your weekend. Enjoy the week. Be safe. We'll see you back here at Sierra Nobles Restaurant Day next time. Take care, everybody. Thanks to Donita Lake and, of course, Gabe Salgado and Danny, Marvelous Marver, Kelly Lee Williams, Marty B, Danny Carlino, the Italian Stallion, Jerry Riles, and, of course, Elizabeth Jetter. Thank you for joining us. Take care. Have a great day, and we'll see you guys next time. Take care, everybody. Rewind Sports 60.